Hi everyone, New Sensei here. Today we're taking a look at another item from Legend Archery's new product line, the XT420 Field Quiver. Let's take a look. The XT420 is Legend Archery's current field quiver. Uh, like the uh, XT320 uh, target quiver, this is a budget intermediate level quiver. Costs around I think, 35 US dollars. So it's very much an affordable choice for most beginners. Uh, and it offers most of the functionality of any field quiver. There's a question from the previous video. Uh, is a field quiver simply a reversed target quiver? The answer is well, technically no. Uh, while there are some quiver designs which can be reversed to be worn as a field quiver or a target quiver, um, for the most part the uh, target quivers are basically quite different. Uh, this is the XT320 which we reviewed last time. Uh, there are very big differences between these two. Notably, the target quiver is normally longer with full arrow tubes, whereas the field quiver normally doesn't use arrow tubes. It uses a different way to keep the arrows falling out, which we'll explore in a bit more detail later. Um, but you can't really reverse this and wear this as a field quiver. I mean, you technically could, uh, but it's not really designed to do that. Given the way the tubes are aligned, it'll probably fall out more than anything else. First things first, we have to get the belt. So as of all Legend Archery Quivers, the belt is located inside the front pocket. So no surprises, that's your typical belt. And since we just opened the front pocket, let's take a quick look inside. Um, it's a much smaller pocket than what you find in the target quiver. Uh, you have enough space for most objects, including pliers and uh, allen wrenches. I also do like the extra pouch here, so there's some elastic, so you can separate different things or put things in place in here. So that's a pretty nice inclusion for the field quiver, which is absent in the 320 target quiver. There's no hip pouch, although there is a, a small pocket here, which uh, has a bit of elastic to keep in place. Uh, again, you can put some tools here. You might be able to drop in your finger tab or your finger sling. So that pocket uh, is pretty convenient. And of course, we reach the actual quiver itself, uh, which you can see just barely that there are no tubes in the field quiver. What you get is a three section compartment. It's actually just um, a small rod between each section. So the arrows go through there, there and there, and they're held in place by the angle of the quiver. So there's no tubes, which should mean less rattling. The quiver is made from nylon. It's that durable canvas style uh, make, and I, I like it. It's a nice colorful design. Again, lots of different colors available. So there's plenty of options. Uh, you have a couple of clips over here, in case you wanna put in other tools. And overall, this is a pretty sleek design. Uh, I haven't really used target field quivers. I do normally use traditional field quivers, but I imagine this would be everything you would need in a quiver. And there's one way to find out. Let's transfer everything from the previous quiver to this one. <laughs> Let's go. So uh, we've got the arrows first. Um, now bear in mind this is a field quiver so everything's reversed. I want my main pouch to be the top one. So we'll slide my first six in there. Then my second two in here. And I'll get the last two down here. Uh, next, I guess I'd have to move over the finger tab and sling. Um, now, I could use this pouch here. So if I'm wearing it, could I... Uh, this, this might be too big for a side pouch. So um, this pouch here might be used for tools. So if I'm carrying like an Allen key, actually let's do that right now. If I've got the Allen key, I might have an Allen key uh, in that position, perhaps. Uh, that, that actually is a good idea. And I could put my other Allen key uh, in here. So I've got my spare Allen key and my screwdriver set. Uh, that is fine. So I've got that set inside. And we have my pliers. And that is a perfect fit for a small toolkit. Okay, that's a good start. Let's zip that up. Uh, zip, zip, yep, perfect. Okay, that's handled that. Uh, we'll get my carabiner clip from this quiver. And we'll put it on here. So 
This is my spare knock set. We'll put on the top one. Nice. We'll get the arrow puller. And I'll also put it uh, on the clip. There we go. So that's my set there. Now I'm still missing a spot for my finger tab. Uh, I do like to drop my tab in the pouch and seems that this is not going to be the solution for me if I want to do it that way. Now, for that reason, I do have the Legend Archery XD520 pouch. Uh, this is sold separately. Um, this is quite popular with compound shooters. You often drop the release aids into this pouch, uh, but I'm going to use it for my finger tab. Same uh, design elements, same materials. You do have a drawstring, so you can open and close this. So you do drop your release aid or your finger tab in here. You can open it up drop in a finger tab that seems to be fine uh, i'll drop my finger sling in as well so that's my carrying pouch and if i want to close it draw the string and there we go that's our thing sealed so pretty cool uh, again more popular with compound shooters but uh, if i'm using this field uh, quiver i might consider using this to store my tab and other stuff inside here there doesn't seem to be a dedicated pin slot, so uh, we could use the front flap in here as a slot. So we'll slide in our uh, arrow pin. Oh, it's perfect. Okay, that would suit me just fine. Nice. So we have our pin there. And now for the burning question, do we have a space for the bow square? Uh, this will be too short, so that's probably not going to be the right option. Uh, you could slide it in here. I mean, that, that, that could work, although, like I said, I'm probably more inclined to keep it separate. I've got to make sure that I'm not missing something here. And uh, to be honest, I don't think this one actually has a dedicated spot. So if I'm missing it, please let me know <laughs> so I don't look stupid again. But I think the most practical place, if you want to carry your bow square, would be in one of the slots there. All right, walking around, Tess, walking around. Yep. Uh, like I said with my last review, I don't really know what to expect, uh, but it's pretty unnoticeable. Yeah, I've got rattling arrows next to me, but for the most part, it's pretty out of the way. Um, this is part of the reason why people would like field quivers, even on a target range. Um, you don't have arrows sticking out and jabbing people's butts. Um, that's not pleasurable. Uh, but yeah, it's, it sits behind you. You can easily reach your arrows. You can see your arrows from looking behind you. Pull them, use them, put them back in. Um, I do like the low positioning of the arrows in this field quiver. Um, and again, being my first target style field quiver, um, this is really comfortable. Um, this is something I would likely make use as my main quiver, just because it's slight, small, practical, convenient. And overall, I mean, considering the price range, this is uh, what I would expect. I've got all my tools down here if I need it. I've got my arrows here. I do have the pouch here, so I can drop in my finger tab when I'm on the, on the other line or scoring. And uh, if I have to seal it, I've got. I also have a, a zip here. I do have a small part, pouch to put more things in. So I just realized that looking down, but the, uh, the hip pouch does have more compartments of storage. So, uh, so far, looking pretty good. Um, what else can we do? Ah, the sit down test. Uh, a little more awkward with the quiver um, pointing backwards. So uh, I guess that's one slight weirdness. That's to be expected, of course. But you know what? Because you are wearing it as a belt, slip it across. Yeah. Um, that's not a problem I would expect to have while wearing a quiver. So that passes all the mobility tests. Uh, let's take it out and have a shot. All right, well, as of last review, I guess we'll uh, field test the quiver by seeing how uh, practical it is at a typical end. So uh, I'll be shooting at the... Ooh, we have the right target again. And I'll see how it works. 
And one of my favorite things about field clippers is that it seems a bit more ergonomic to pull an arrow out from the rear like this and then slide it through. Not so much important in target archery because there's no um, time limit or it's no need to uh, do things quickly. Uh, but something I always enjoyed about field clippers is just pulling out like this as compared to pulling out from in front. As you can see, no problems in retrieving arrows. Um, you don't have to look at the arrows. If you had to look, you can always look behind you and pull the arrows out. But if I had to pull an arrow out, just reach behind me, pull on an arrow, and that. Yeah, I can see why people enjoy full quivers. Um, in fact, I might even really consider this to be my main quiver, just because it's so practical and easy to use. So again, in walking back, there's nothing here which bothers me. Um, there's hardly any weight to it, which is great. And when it comes to putting the arrows back in, we'll drop two in there and we'll drop the rest in my front pocket. Done. Okay, oh, that's, that's a very practical quiver. I like. All right, second end. Um, you can do the 12 if you really want to, though it's a bit hard with a finger tab. It's more of a compound thing, I'm not going to bother with that. I said before that it's just really easy to just intuitively pick up an arrow from the quiver without looking. And last arrow. Nice. And slow motion drop. That was pretty anticlimactic. Let's do some uh, bonus footage from the back so you can see how easy it is to manipulate the arrows. Overall, I'm very happy with the XT420 Field Quiver. Uh, it's functional, it's pretty, uh, definitely a style of quiver which I think many people don't start off thinking of using, but many archers will gravitate towards a Field Quiver. Not because it's any better than a Target Quiver, but because it's more comfortable or more practical in some ways and I think uh, many people would enjoy this kind of quiver again at this price range of 35 US dollars uh, you can't really beat the value I think um, and overall this is a pretty solid quiver something I would definitely use myself and I think from now on I will so anyway this is New Sensei thank you for watching I'll see you next time